Welcome to GMI, Guitar and Music Institute Podcast, Episode 2, So You Want to Be a Pro Guitar Player, with me, Jed Brocky. Making a living from music is a dream that many people would love to realise. But what does it take, and what is the reality of being a professional musician? That's what I'll be discussing over the next 30 minutes or so on this podcast. If you're listening to this podcast on channels such as iTunes, I'd encourage you to check out the podcast on GMI, Guitar and Music Institute website, as it includes additional material that backs up this episode. You can find us at www.guitarandmusicinstitute.com. So, becoming a professional musician is something that I dreamt of many years ago. In fact, as soon as I started playing the guitar, it suddenly all fell into place. It's what I wanted to do with my life. And it has been what I've done with my life. So what is the what were the dreams and what is the reality of that? For many people starting out, and it certainly was true for me, I wanted or I thought and dreamt of myself playing all over the world, playing music that I wanted to play, uh, being popular and you know, being fated by people and admired and all the rest of it. Perhaps you have those aspirations too. Uh, the reality is always different, and uh, I want to discuss that. When you think about being a professional musician, I mean, what does that mean? It means that you earn your living from playing music, or perhaps in a broader sense, from music-related activities. Uh, there's a, a young guy I know from a few years ago who was at school uh, and when I say school I don't mean uh, like university or college I mean pre that and um, he made literally hundreds and hundreds of pounds or so he told me busking so he would go out every Saturday every Sunday and any other time and he would play and he would make an absolute fortune. So, is he a professional musician? I suppose he is. It might not be your idea of what a professional musician is, sitting out on the street with a hat or your guitar case open, but in, you know, the fact of the matter is, he was a professional musician. He was playing music and he was getting paid for it. So that brings in, I guess, another sort of area we... We want to be known as professional musicians, but we want to be recognised as such as well. Um, With YouTube, perhaps people who are out busking can get the sort of attention that they want if they were filming their own performances, and that could lead to other things. Uh, What we really probably want is not just the adoration of the audience but that our peers actually recognise us as good players, as very good players, as people that have got something to offer. So what I'm trying to get at here is the the, the dream, my dream when I was young, very in my teens really, just coming through, was, you know, I had this little fantasy about how I would be, you know, how my life would go, how I would be as a, as a player. And... You know, I've been kind of lucky in on many levels and in many ways um, because I've realised a lot of that. But that doesn't mean to say that I haven't had to do a lot of other things to actually make a living as a professional guitarist. So before I go into the whole areas of how money could be made or or, or all of that, I just wanted to talk about some of the the sort of values that people that I know and in my own life I think I've aspired to have or or chased after to 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 be a professional musician. I think the first thing is I love music. I love playing music and I love playing the guitar. And I want to do that to the best of my ability. So that has to be right up there with that's probably the most important thing. It's not the only thing, but it's something that drives me on. I want to express myself, and I found music as the medium in which I could express myself well. 
and you also need tenacity uh, to keep working. All the players that I know that have you know played as professional musicians all the way through the years, they've done so because they've kept working at their craft. They've never sort of sat back and lay on their laurels and just, you know, didn't try to get better. So there's that tenacity of always trying to improve yourself as a musician, how you play the actual instrument. Other areas which are kind of maybe less obvious is flexibility. I think professional musicians need to be flexible. That whole little fantasy idea of how you can actually, you know, be a professional musician and have everything on your terms. For most people, or for most musicians, regardless of their instrument, life is just not like that. A lot of the time, you'll be playing other people's music. That's just the reality. You may be playing them in shows, in concerts, in cover bands, playing at weddings. There's a whole host of things which you have to do. Uh, you may also need to teach a little. Most musicians teach a little. Many teach a lot more. Some only teach. I think it's important if you are a player to actually go out and play and not just teach. I think if you are a player as well, you can bring something to the party uh, through your experiences to up-and-coming musicians, you know, based on both your professional experience and your musical experience and and that gets forged through the fire of performance when you know you're in front of large crowds of people you're under a lot of pressure perhaps with the music that you have uh, you're on maybe you're playing on a radio or a tv show or something really demanding that uh, intense scrutiny if you pass through it um, actually shows that you, you well it prepares you a sen in a sense for future years and future events and also gives you something to to refer to and relate to when you're telling young people who are looking to get through um, you've got to be single minded as a musician and, and aim to be that I think uh, there are many people who have successfully Managed to have a part-time job and music. I have used tuition as a way of never having to take a part-time job because on a personal level I always felt that it would be the thin end of the wedge. If you got a, a job that was paying reasonable money, how long before you actually let that job take over or you were too tired to practice or you couldn't do a gig so, you know, Tal Farlow, the great jazz guitar player, he was a sign writer, a very, very good one. And he's also a, a fantastic, uh, one of the world's great jazz guitarists. And certainly if you look at a lot of the classical composers, a lot of them had daytime jobs. Uh, but for me, I've, I've been lucky, I suppose, in that I've, I've never needed to, to actually take a part-time job and I've focused single-mindedly on trying somehow as much as I can to earn money as a professional musician. So you might be thinking, well, he's talking about money all the time, money, 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 money. It is just a reality of life though. When I was young and I was wanting to play guitar uh, I want, that's what I wanted to be. I didn't even think about money. It, it, it's just, it didn't come into the equation. I wanted to be a guitar player and play guitar. But the reality is, if you meet someone, if you have kids, if you've got a home, you know, just to feed yourself and put a roof over your head, and maybe, you know, if you've got children and all the rest of it which come along later in life, you do need to make money. So that is part of the whole uh, well, I, I guess it's part of the whole deal that you've got to you've got to take into account. It's interesting that so many times in my life when I've met people and they say, "What do you do?" In fact, nowadays 
I don't usually say I'm a professional musician or I, I wouldn't say I'm a professional musician. I'd say I'm a musician, but if someone says, you know, what do you do for a living? I play guitar or... I wouldn't say that now. I, I try to hide it. I, because they always then say, oh, do you manage to make a, any money at that? That is the first thing that they ask. Do you manage to make any money at that? Because most people work for money. And this is the great dilemma or dichotomy for musicians. You, we, we play because we love it. And at the same time, we play because we also need to, you know, make a living. Okay, so in terms of, you know, what does it take to be a professional guitar players, player? I talked earlier about flexibility. And the reality is in, in these days when perhaps in many ways performance opportunities are less well prevalent than they used to be, how do you go about actually you know, creating a life which means you have some income to actually do things like feed yourself. And I think uh, most people are now looking at a portfolio almost. It's called a portfolio employment plan. So you would be doing some teaching. You may be doing some uh, performance. You would also be doing other things like uh, you may have a YouTube channel, doing things on the web. Obviously, some people out there have been incredibly successful, unbelievably successful. I see some of these channels on YouTube, for example, and, you know, it's just this, the, the numbers are literally staggering. They're, they're now well established, and as, as YouTube's now more established, they're kind of, I, I don't know how they can fail now, in a sense, They've got that income coming in. There's other ways you can make income. You could write books, guitar books. That the death of printed media was we talked about about five years ago. But the reality is people are buying more books than ever. And with uh, devices such as Kindle, there's even more opportunities for people to put ideas out there. And indeed, I, I've done that quite successfully, or reasonably successfully myself, over the last year and a part. Uh, year and a bit, uh, actually publishing music books through GMI. You know, for some people, they're going to get in a band and it might actually take off and be an absolute huge success. These people are very lucky, in my opinion, because in many ways it's the roll of a dice. The, uh, for most of them, the success that they have in playing big stadiums and all the rest is perhaps quite short. Now, obviously, there are many examples of bands who continue to play for years and years and years, but even within named bands where you think, wow, they must be making a fortune, you may find that the main writers are taking all the, the royalties and a lot of the guys in the bands, the bands are just actually hired hands. I've done it myself. I know plenty of people who have worked in big-name bands and they're only actually getting... Uh, a performance fee, fundamentally, which, you know, is, is not great if you actually look at the numbers of the people there. There are other ways, obviously, of making money in session, the session land, but a lot of that work is dried up now, although there may be some avenues opening up, or there are avenues opening up on, say, Fiverr.com, where you can actually go and you can offer... I'll play a track for five dollars, and then you put a whole lot of add-ons for more, for more cash for for the job. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say here is that to have what it takes to be a professional guitar player, you need to be, you need to be in love with the instrument and love with the music first. That's what you need to have first and foremost. I think it was Martin Taylor I read many many years ago said you should only become a professional musician if you have to. And I think that's great advice because sometimes the phone doesn't ring. I thought we'd talk a little about the work that I have done as a professional player over the years. And it's very diverse and it's ebbed and flowed as the years gone by. I would say that a good part of my income, or probably up to 60%, has come through 
educational areas. So that's teaching in schools, teaching in colleges, teaching in universities, uh, teaching at summer schools. That's been a big, big chunk of what I've done. And, you know, you've got to bring something to that. That's why I keep going back to the perform performance angle. Because performance is something that I love doing when, I, when I've not got many gigs on, I miss it. It means you get out and about and, and most importantly, you get to play and you get to play to, to, to real people. Other things I've done is touring. I've toured, I've played in corporate music bands. I've played corporate music solo guitar. I've played at music festivals and uh, music industry events. I've done a lot of cord work for educational music productions as well as creating a lot of theory and uh, exam exam board sheets for Scottish Qualifications Authority. I've produced albums for people because I had the equipment and the time and, and all the, and the, the understanding. I've produced albums, I've played on albums. So you can see that I've arranged music and I've done a whole lot of things and just about every single style you could think of. And, and that comes back to that whole point about flexibility. So, for example, when I played in a covers band, we played up to four hours worth of music. So we had to be able to play music from the 40s through the 50s, 60s, 70s, all the way through. We also played Scottish reels and jigs uh, and arranged music for that. I've also made income from composition. I've composed for several films and also installations. I had a piece of work that I was asked to do for the Scottish Parliament, done media on the, on the web, and also income, which comes in, which is from PRS and MCPS. So PRS is a performing rights society, so if you have music, you perform it on the radio, you get paid a fee. If you're a composer of that song, you also get mechanicals. So that that has brought an income as well. So you can see, going back to this random chat, <laughs> that this portfolio that I'm talking about is, is really quite important to get into your head. It may be that you get in a band, you become a world star, and, you know, it's brandy and cigars for the rest of your life. But if you're like most people, you will probably have to look at this portfolio idea where you're actually making income from numerous sources with a bedrock which may be in performance, or it may be in uh, teaching, or it may be in some other activity around music. So in doing all these activities, what are the skills that you really need? You need to be able to, and this is something I've struggled with, and the people who know me will know how bad I am at it, but you really need to be able to keep time. I'm not talking about musical time. You need to be able to turn up in time. You know, here I'm talking about this and I'm talking about turning up on time. It's so obvious, but it's the one thing that will lose you gigs and jobs and everything if you can't turn up on time. And you also have to, if you do corporate work, then there are other things that come into that. You've got to be able to, if you're dealing with a client, you've got to be able to talk to the client, put them at ease. You've got to have the right dress code. You might have to wear dinner jackets uh, or lounge suits there's different things you have to wear for corporate occasions and in corporate occasions I suppose one of the things that can be a little soul destroying at times is you know you're there as background They're not, you're not there to be a star you're there just to provide background music for whatever it is that could be an event for a company it could be for some in some swanky hotel for uh, just a family. Somebody's having a birthday party and they want a guitar player or something in the corner. Could be for a wedding. And in, you know, weddings, again, that's something you need a lot of skills in that area. You need to, if you can sight read, then that opens up a, a lot of potential for you. So in terms of skills, actually turning up on time, being able to understand how to deal with people and work with people and being able to have skills like sight reading skills, improvisational skills. So I haven't really talked about 
talent, have I? And that's because, you know, when I was starting out, I thought if I was the best guitar player in the world, that would mean something. And obviously it does. The better musicians do get more work. There's absolutely no doubt about it because good players want to play with good players. And opportunities arise. But a lot of people who wanted, say, to be in the music business and maybe it didn't happen for them, they would say to me, or I've heard it said to other people, well, it's great because you've got talent. That was the big thing, you've got talent. And I think talent's a, a, a funny sort of word to use. It's almost like an excuse. You have talent and you had an unfair advantage. Whereas the reality is, you know, we we don't really know how much how talented we are until you've been at it for 20 years, I would suggest. When you've gone through the fire of practice and rehearsal, performance, and you've done a whole load of work, and maybe it's composition. and It's, it's not until we actually, until people actually see the products of what, of what what your hard work has done that you can then gauge what their talent is. To say that you're talented which is why you do what you do, is almost like saying, you know, I, I didn't have that talent, so I could never I could never have done that anyway. But the reality is, it's just about hard work. It's about practice, continual practice. Uh, it's about making sure that you're able to do what's been asked, that you, the next hurdle that comes along, you're able to jump it. So I've been playing guitar now, I almost hesitate to, say this for almost 37 years and I still practice I'm still trying to get better I don't know if I'm getting better I think I am but I'm I'm still working on it till such time that that I can't actually do that I would hope that I would continue to do that that's something that's been a constant thread through my life so these are the sort of things you've got to be thinking about if you want to, you know, we can all have dreams and aspirations and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that the dream, a dream, is sometimes a whole lot different from the reality. The reality means, like, coming home late at night, three o'clock in the morning, sometimes four o'clock in the morning with your gear, having to haul it up a bunch of flight of stairs. The reality is, you play a performance, you take the applause, and within five seconds, five seconds, five minutes, the audience have gone. You know, it costs the audience a lot to come out to a performance. You know, they may have to get babysitters, they may have a meal, they may be going out for some drinks after. You know, the, the performance that you give to them it's just one part of their night and it's cost them a lot more than just perhaps the entrance fee. And they have lives to get on with as well. So if you're expecting to be fated for hours afterwards, it, it doesn't work like that. Unless uh, you come across some oddballs. You do the gig, you do the job, everyone's had a good time and you go. And hopefully you proceed to go and get paid. So wherever you are in terms of thinking about becoming if you want to become a professional musician, a professional guitar player, here is kind of a, a summary of my uh, chat <laughs> and all the different things I've covered. You need to have a wide range of skills and you need to develop, keep developing them over your life. And that includes sight reading, technical ability, musicality, improvisational skills knowledge of harmony and all the rest of it. You need to have a single-minded approach that you're a musician and in terms of jobs, sometimes it's not for everyone, but I would say stick to trying to do that and don't let the thin end of the wedge creep in. Find ways of making money. Remember the story about the, the boy who, who was busking that I told at the beginning? I mean, making £300, that's about, what, $450 a day just busking. You've got to be flexible. You've got to be able to put your hand to a whole different host of things, like it could be you're going to play blues one night, you might be in a show the next night, you might be doing a wedding gig the next night, you might have to do some teaching the following day, or maybe there's a workshop coming up. The other thing I think uh, 
the the one thing that I haven't really said, the one thing I haven't really spoken about, which will get you lots of work as well, is if you give others work. That's the you know a huge way of getting work is to give others work, and you'll then benefit in kind. They'll people generally give work to those that give them work. It's just the way the whole thing works, and and on that, you'll generally find that you'll only get work through people you know. I can only think of one time in my life where the telephone went and it was for a world tour and I didn't know the guy. But then it did come through someone I did know, to be honest. What other tools do you need other than your determination and your, uh, let's put that in quotes, talent? Well, you need a phone. (laughs) You know, these are obvious things, but I do want to tell you of one story. A very talented drummer who's sadly no longer with us, and he didn't have a phone. He got lots of work because he was so good. How he got the work was he didn't have a phone, he didn't have a car. So he always had to get a gig where someone else came and picked him up. And he he, he didn't have a phone, but he got it through a neighbour. A neighbour had a phone, and they used to hand him put notes through his door when he actually got a gig. So... Well, that's something else. Okay, so what do you feel about making, you know, what are your thoughts and feelings about being a musician? Maybe uh, you don't agree with anything I've said, and if you don't, that's that's fine. I'd love to hear what you think about it. You know, what are your hopes and aspirations? Perhaps you're a classical musician and you're going to go straight into an orchestra, which would be fantastic. But again, you'll only be playing music. It's unlikely you're going to be playing your own music. You'll probably be playing other people's music. 98% of the time if you're uh, lucky yeah so it would be great to have if you want to email the Guitar Music Institute go go on to gmi www.guitarmusicinstitute.com and email me I'd love to hear from you or you can leave comments if you join up to GMI you can leave comments under this podcast that's if you're on the GMI website wherever you are in the world it, it would be just fantastic to hear your stories about how you make a living as a guitar player or as a musician and what you think it takes this is what I felt it takes and what it's taken from me in my life but I wouldn't have had it any other way because it's just a fantastic creative way to live your life and you're playing music I mean does it get any better than that probably not well certainly not for me so that's it thank you for listening I'm going to have a whole lot of new podcasts coming up soon so come back again I hope you find this of interest. For now, it's me, Jed Brocky, saying goodbye.